want to minister to you on the integrity of the word of God. The integrity. Because it seems like man has lost his word. They'll tell you something. What they going to do for you? <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh-huh. When? <laughs> I, I do it tomorrow. And guess what? Tomorrow never comes. But God and his word is sure. The integrity of the word of God. You notice over there in John first chapter, first verse, it says, in the beginning was the word. And the word was what? With God. And the word was what? Was God. You can't separate God from his word. The word of God is God himself. So why is it that we operate in unbelief? And why is it that our faith wavers? You know why? It's a lack of the assurance of the integrity of the promises that's found in the word. If you don't know what the words say, how can you believe God? Because faith is in the word. Faith is what is expressed in God's word. You don't know the word, you don't have faith. Oh, I'm believing the Lord. Oh, yes, I know people that have died believing the Lord. Why? The word. You got to have the word and you got to live the word. The word. The word of God is powerful and sharper than any two Esther. The word of God is alive. It's actively alive. Piercing even to the divining as of your soul and your spirit. Sometimes people say, well, some told me or some said. They don't know the difference between their soul and their spirit. You understand what I'm saying? Something talking to you all the time. But you got to know who and what it is. You got to be able to discern whether it's a familiar spirit that's familiar with you and your ways. Or is it the word of God and the Holy Ghost? While I was outside, girl, something was talking to me and told me, well, how can you confirm or how can you know what was talking to you if you don't know the word? You have things in this world or this world is diametrically opposed to the things of God. And so the integrity of God's word is always upheld by his spirit. The word of God and the Holy Ghost is the only way a spiritual transaction can take place. You got to have the word and the Holy Ghost. Some people got the word and don't even know that there is a Holy Ghost. They can quote the word and them kind of people scare me. They can quote it up and down sideways. But if you follow them around, <laughs> they not living it. What the Lord said, he looking and booking. Ain't that what he said? Well, in the Bible, it says God has books. God keeping his books. And when the judgment comes, the books are going to be open. And every man going to have to do what? Go before the judgment seat. Every man, for what? For what you did concerning the gospel of Jesus Christ and what you did in your body. Because this body is supposed to be his. It's a holy temple of the living God. Amen? Remember now, the integrity of God's word is the basis of faith. You don't have the word of God, you don't have faith. And we're not talking about faith. Well, what faith are you? Well, I'm Baptist, I'm Catholic. We're not talking about that. We're talking about God himself Faith. It's impossible to please him unless you're operating in faith. You can't please him unless you're operating in faith. So come with me to Romans, the 10th chapter. Look at that 8th verse. But what said it? The word is nigh thee. The word has to be found in two places when it comes to you. It got to be found in your mouth and in your heart. In your mouth and in your heart. If it's in your mouth and in your heart, you go do it. If you confess who Jesus Christ is to you, who is he to you? He's my healer. He's my deliverer. Well, how do you know that? That's because I spend time with the integrity of his word. The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith. See, God's word is the word of faith. It is the word of truth, which I'm preaching right now or proclaiming to you. Now, when it comes to being in your mouth, you know, people like silent. Well, you know, I pray silently or, you know, I say it under my breath. How the devil go hear you? He can't read your mind, but he can put things in there. No, you speak the word out boldly. You speak it out. You, while you're driving your car, you can be listening to the word and talking the word. 
while you washing dishes, whatever you're doing. Because if your mind is staying on the Lord Jesus Christ, he'll keep you in perfect peace. Don't care if everything around you is falling down. He'll keep you in perfect peace. And he tell us what? Do not let your heart be troubled. Why? Because you got to believe with your heart. The heart is a believing mechanism. If it's troubled, how is it going to believe? And why are y'all worrying about all this stuff that's going on? You can't do nothing about it no way but pray. <laughs> can't do nothing but pray. Let me worry. Getting all them wrinkles and, and all that kind of stuff. No, you uh-uh. No. What that song say? It's save your way with children. Restore your broken home. All that. The word can do that. The integrity of the word can do that. You can't. All this stuff you've been trying to fix ain't fixed yet. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't fixed. Lord is broke, and your word says, if it's not fixed or if it's not there, you are created for me, and I choose to believe your word. You give me the authority to speak to it. You didn't tell me to go around the mountain. You told me to speak to it and tell it to move. Going up the rough side of the mountain. I know going up the rough side. You better talk to them rough places in your life. So he says, verse 9, that if Thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. See, you go confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ. Not your church, not your pastor. The Lord Jesus Christ. He's the great shepherd of the sheep. He's the one that brought forth the word of God because he is the living word, the written word, and the spoken word. So if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, we are here to lift up Jesus. So he says, and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead. Notice what he said. He said, you shall be saved. So then the only sin that can send anybody to hell is what? Rejecting Jesus Christ. Well, you mean drinking and smoking and cursing and carousing? That don't send you to hell? Rejecting Jesus Christ. Well, you drinking, smoking, carousing, you need a savior and a deliverer. And that's who and what he is. You call on him, and he said, I will deliver you. Look what it says in verse 10. But with the heart man believing unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The first part, believing in your heart that he was born of a virgin, and then he went to Calvary's cross, God raised him up, now he's seated at the right hand. That has to do with your salvation. The second part where he says, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That has to be done for deliverance. You're addicted to something. Or you're doing something you ought to not do. And you're saying, Lord, help me. The first thing he's going to do is direct you to his word. That's the first thing. That you got to have that vital relationship with him. Man shall not live by red beans and rice and fried chicken. <laughs> and some good chitlins. <laughs> Come some good ones, huh? Cook good. <laughs> he said, but you shall live by every. It didn't say just in Romans. It said every word of God. And then you're going to be held responsible if you ain't read the book from Genesis to Revelation. Well, I read the Bible, I can't understand it. The Lord will not give you understanding unless you go. If you're looking to get understanding, you won't get it. Why? As you read this Bible, Day in and day out, understanding come. Why would he give you understanding if you shucking and jiving? You got to make the decision that you go read the word because Jesus Christ died for it. Now, that's up to y'all. That's up to each individual person. Because, see, it's easy to say, Lord, I love you, and I praise you, and I worship you. Which is what? Mouth. But their heart is far from me. See, he knows. On that note... Let's go over here to Hebrews, fourth chapter, verse 12. I don't believe in holding service half the night. I believe in starting on time. Amen. Because when Jesus, when the rapture takes place, if you ain't ready, you can't say, wait, Jesus. I got to pack my bag. I got to, uh-uh. You can't hold that train up. You can't even run and catch it. It's going to be what? In a twinkling of an eye. We're talking about spiritual matters. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. 
that you be made conformable to his death. You got to know how to identify with the Lord Jesus Christ, death, burial, and resurrection. Because you have been predestinated to conform to the image of Christ, to be just like Jesus Christ. So when people see you, I see Jesus. When people look at you, and you know God will judge you on how you handle other people. <laughs> Your old mean self. He going to judge you on how you handle people. Why? Because he died for us all. All of us. All of us. Not just for some of us. All of us. He died for everybody. He said, for God so loved the world, so the world is everybody in the world, that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever, that's where it comes down to the nitty gritty, whosoever believe it on him shall be saved. So look at Hebrews 4 and 12. It says, for the word of God is quick. It's actively alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. That means it cut. It can bless you one way. Look, the word of God is a two-edged sword. The word of God is for blessing and it's for chastisement. You belong to the Lord and you do things that God don't particularly care about. Because you his, he will chastise you the way that he wants to. Not the way somebody else and not the way you think either. He will do whatever it takes to turn you to him, to serve him. Because you said, I'm yours and I belong to you. You said that. (laughs) It says, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing as under of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That means that the word of God is a personality. God can look in your heart and know what the intent is, and he can analyze your motives. You can be saying one thing and thinking another. He know it. You might can fool me some of the time, but not all the time. (laughs) So look, but it says of the joints and marrow. First, he says the soul and the spirit, the human soul, the human spirit, joints and marrow. Now we come to the body. They might have some of us in here that have bone cancer. Don't even know it. You might have degenerative arthritis. You understand what I'm saying? The word of God is powerful enough to go in there and cut that out. If you're going to the doctor, that's fine and good. Just pray for him and tell the Lord, we going to the doctor, Lord. I ain't going by myself. We going. We taking the Holy Ghost and the angels too, and they go talk to that doctor. Make sure he cut right, do everything right. Okay? The word of God. God created that doctor for his people. You can go to the doctor and say, okay, doctor, what you going to do? He going to say, what's wrong with you? Well, that's why I come here. (laughs) So you can tell me what's wrong with me. (laughs) The first time he said, what's wrong with you? I must be at the wrong place. (laughs) That's the reason why you pray and say, Lord. Something is not right. I need to know what it is. And I trust you because you're the great physician. See, that's what the word of God for. That's the reason why it's powerful. That's the reason why it's a two-edged sword. It can cut out anything that God didn't put there. Because the word of God creates. And the word of God can cut away what the enemy put there. Because God didn't put it there. Amen? (laughs) All right. Look in verse 13. Neither is there any creature that is not manifested in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. You can't hide from God. You can't hide from him. You can't be having no secret. You ain't got no no way. Everybody know about it. You the last person to find out that they know about it. I'm going to tell you something. Don't tell nobody here. Okay. What is it? God, let me tell you. And then why they telling you don't tell nobody? They going over there telling somebody else that don't tell nobody. Now come with me to Isaiah, Old Testament. The Bible says if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. It gives you a right and a privilege to go back in Old Testament and appropriate the promises that were given to Abraham. See, there's neither Greek, nor Jew, nor Gentile. As far as Christ is concerned, they ain't even male or female. If you in Christ. You got to be in Christ. When you received him as your savior, you were placed in Christ. But that's a journey. You're starting over here and you got to get to that point. 
And so, sometimes we walk in that straight line and we get kind of crooked. The Lord just kind of get you back on line. Sometimes we go back two or three steps. We move, walk, or slide back. And then the Lord has to scoot us on up. But it's a journey. You got the whole life until the end. That's the only way you go know if you say. What you mean? If you say, you go whole life to the end. Because Jesus, what did he say? You in the Father's hand. And can't nobody pluck you out. Nothing and nobody. So you hold out until the end. You're not going to quit and you're not going to give up. Because a lot of people are turning away from serving the Lord the way that he wants to be served. They're turning away from it. Isaiah 53. Look in verse 4. It says, surely he has borne, translation said, our diseases, our griefs, and carried our sorrows. And he's carried our pain. Yet we did extreme him, stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. God put Jesus on the cross for us. Then he says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we what? If we are here, that means we healed already, huh? That's what it says. It says, we are healed. Well, how come I'm sick? She said it right. You don't have no faith. That means you don't have no fellowship with the word. We got spiritual jargon now. Oh, I'm blessed. That's normal for Christians to be blessed. That's the last thing you ought to be saying, how blessed you are. We're supposed to be blessed. That's a part of our heritage, being blessed. I wanted you to see that. You are here. It's that you may lack an assurance of the integrity of the promise of God in his word. Your faith might be wavering because, you know, you're letting your senses talk to you louder than the word and your spirit man or the Holy Ghost. What you see is talking. How you feel is talking to you. Everything is talking to you and you listening to that instead of what the Holy Ghost is saying through the word. We're talking about being healed and whole and made free. Only the word can do this for you. And it don't cost you nothing because Jesus Christ has paid the price already. No doctor bill. I ain't been to the doctor but two times. That was for Jack and Joseph. That was to have them. That's the only time I've been to the doctor. And I'll be 71 next year. Go. Get back, Jack. (laughs) All right. That's enough bragging on me. Let's get back. (laughs) Oh, baby, the Lord fills my mouth with good things so that my youth is renewed as the eagle. And he's not slight concerning his promises. All of his promises are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. And that's how I live, by the word of God. Amen? amen. And I speak it too boldly. Why? Because God backing me up. What can you do me? Nothing. See that angel standing behind me? Hmm. Why are we over here? Let's go to Isaiah 55. I see in that verse 8, you'll hear people say, well, the Lord said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, said the Lord. He talking about an unrighteous and wicked person. You are to develop the mind of Christ. You read the word of God, you are to renew your mind. If you don't renew your mind with the word of God, you're going to still think the same old way. The same old dumb way we was thinking before we got saved. That old man still hanging around. Now let's suck on the cross and let him stay there. Let the old man stay on the cross. Don't let him come down. He'll try to entice you to live the same old life you did before you got saved. And Jesus Christ is looking at that. So he says, verse 9, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Like I said, he's talking to that wicked man, that unrighteous man. Tells you that in verse 7. But look what he says in verse 10. For as the rain coming down and the snow from heaven. Did y'all see that snow? Oh, I got my concordance out and I looked up snow for every scripture. If it says leprous as white as snow, I didn't go to that. All you do is get the concordance. It got all the words listed. And I praise and I worship the Lord for the snow. It was just too pretty. The Lord says, come, let us reason together. Though your sins be scarlet, he can wash them and make them what? Whiter than snow. I went to that one and thanked him for saving me and washing me in his blood. So I praise and worship him from the snow. Why? Because it came from heaven. <laughs> it was just too pretty. <laughs> and then thoughts start coming. Yeah, the roundup. What they got to do with the roundup? 
They had nothing to do with the roundup. Y'all, he ain't you. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> now, he's going to give us a natural example. He brought a little farming in here. He says, well, as the rain coming down, and I even got down here 12, 8, 2017 Friday, snow. <laughs> Some of y'all may not write in your Bible, but this is a workbook. That's why you went to school. So you know how to read the Bible and write in it. Don't just let your Bible collect dust and take it to church on Sunday and can't find it Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Don't leave your Bible here at church on your seat unless you got two or three at home. Why? You want to become a living epistle. You want the word of God to just settle down and make itself at home in you. Because the word of God is Jesus Christ. You want him to be able to put his feet up on the coffee table, pay the bills, keep the refrigerator full. All right? Well, he done made himself at home in you, and he will do that if you let him. He said, the rain come down, the snow from heaven, and return it not thither. It means it don't go back because it's coming down for a reason. It watered the earth and make it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Now, if you don't sow seeds, what happens if you don't plant nothing? You won't get nothing. What happens if you plant a whirlwind? You'll sow some wind. That's what you're going to do. You understand? You've got to plant. The word of God is seed. Where is it going to grow? Inside your heart. You plant it like a farmer. You plant the word of God like a seed and you tend to it day and night. And it'll bring forth. The word has enough power to bring itself to pass. Look, now God lacking it as his word. In verse 11, so shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please and prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. That's the integrity of the word of God. That's God backing his word up during his purpose and his will. Come with me to Psalms 107. He said he sent his word. Look at verse 20. What did it say? He sent his word and what? Healed them and delivered them. The word is the only thing that can heal you and deliver you. You can't. You can't. The integrity of God's word. Backing his word up. All right. Come over here to Psalms 103. I taught last Sunday. We're to eulogize the Lord Jesus. And tradition has it at a funeral to eulogize the person. And the person ain't even there. It's just the body. The person not there is just the body. Say, well, I'm going to the funeral out of respect for the person. Person ain't even there. Or out of respect for the family. I'm not coming against it, but don't care where you go in your house, on your job. Opportunity to present itself. What you supposed to do? Lift up Jesus. You brag on Jesus. You lift him up. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not what? All. You don't forget his benefits. As a matter of fact, you put him in remembrance of what they are. Or you can open your Bible and read them. Verse 3, first thing, who forgive it all my iniquities. Forgive it every last one of them. John 1 and 9 says, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you. To forgive you. He don't hold that against you. People do. The Lord don't hold nothing against you. He don't even remember it unless you bring it up again to him. Lord, remember when? Lord, I I don't remember that. Oh, we have a habit of going back in the past, digging up stuff that should have stayed buried. They don't bless you, don't do nothing. We have a way of uh, digging people up, planting them again. (laughs) That's just a part of human nature that we don't need. He said, who forgive it all of my iniquity? Look at that. Who heal it? All my diseases. The integrity of God's word. His promise. He's already said he has healed us. Who redeemed thy life from destruction. Who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. See, he's the one that's doing all this. Ain't got man's name in here nowhere. And verse 5. Who satisfied my mouth with good things. Because God is good. So that my youth is renewed as the eagle. I could run through a troop and jump over a wall, baby, if I had to. Why? Because with God, all things are possible. But with God, nothing shall be impossible. If I had to do it, in my mind, I still can do it.